So good, good afternoon and welcome to all of our Ajax rising leaders and speakers. And thank you so much for joining us today. A special thank you to Mayor Sean Collier for taking the time to be here with us. So my name is Leticia Rose and I wear a couple of hats. I am the manager of partnerships and programs for MLSC Launchpad, a youth facility in the downtown Toronto area that helps young people reach their full potential. I'm also the founder and principal consultant at Skill Market, an organization that works to build equitable and inclusive spaces and strategies. And I'm the current co-chair of the Emerging Leaders Network, a community of 25,000 rising leaders across the greater Toronto and Hamilton area, working to connect and develop and activate civic engagement and community response. But most importantly, I'm an Ajax resident. Uh, I've lived in Durham for the past uh, 15 years, and uh, I, I'm proud that I get to live, work, and play out here. Uh, so before we jump in, I want to start off with a land acknowledgement, because it's so important for us to uh, recognize the land that we stand and virtually stand on. And some of you uh, might not uh, you know, might be representing a different ter territory. Um, the territory that I'll be recognizing applies to the broader GTHA. So Civic Action acknowledges that the greater Toronto and Hamilton area is situated on traditional and current Indigenous territories that include the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, the Mississaugas of the Credit, uh, and the Mississaugas of the Scugog First Nation. The treaties that cover these territories include the Dish with One Spoon, Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between Iroquois Confederacy and Ojibwe and an allied nations to peacefully share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes and Upper Canada treaties. Today, the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area is still the home of many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island. And we recognize the historical oppression and inequalities that continue to, that Indigenous communities continue to face. In our role as civic conveners, Civic Action is committed to rebuilding and renewing a respectful relationship with Indigenous communities and non-Indigenous people to support the important work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. And it's important that although this is a land acknowledgement, that we go a step further, that we ensure that it's beyond lip service and that we use our power and our privilege and our opportunities to make our spaces as equitable for Indigenous communities as possible. So we are excited to have a diversity of rising leaders here today for our digital dish. One of our priorities at ELN is connecting rising leaders to decision makers, which is why we launched Digital Dish, discussions at, for decision makers across our regions back in the spring. We met with Mayor Tory in April, Mayor Bonnie Crombie from Mississauga in May, and we'll be heading to Hamilton for a Digital Dish panel with community leaders in October. Today, we're excited, I think I'm more excited than anyone else, to have a discussion with Ajax Mayor Sean Collier. Today, we'll be starting off with an opening remarks from our program manager of the Emerging Leaders Network and from Mayor Collier before we jump into a Q&A between five rising leaders and the mayor. I would like to now introduce Rebecca to share a bit more about our network. Rebecca, take it away. Amazing. Thank you so much, Leticia. Um, and welcome to the mayor and to our amazing ELNers who are on the call with us today. And to anyone who is um, tuning into this conversation after afterwards or, or sharing it with folks online, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in and be with us virtually. Um, so as Leticia mentioned, my name is Rebecca Clausen, and I'm the program manager of Civic Actions Emerging Leaders Network. Um, so the ELN is a program under our Leadership Foundation, and we aim to connect, develop, and activate rising leaders from all across the greater Toronto um, and Hamilton area. 
So since we were created in 2006, we've grown to 2,600 members strong, um, and we represent folks from across all different sectors. So we have representation from public, private, nonprofit, um, academics, and, and also folks who maybe don't identify with any certain sector yet and are, are still kind of figuring that out. Um, and we also have folks from all sorts of different um, communities, backgrounds, um, and parts of our region. So wherever you're tuning in from today, uh, welcome. Um, our network is free to join and we offer um, different monthly events and initiatives um, that kind of range in topic from um, city building to leadership development um, to looking at different civic issues. So sometimes we host workshops, panel discussions, um, skills trainings. Um, other times we just have networking, socials and, and connection events. Um, we have different mentorship opportunities and we even recently started a book club. So lots of different things going on. Um, and again, anyone who identifies as a rising leader in our region and in their sector is more than welcome to join. So if you're not yet a member, we do really encourage you to um, check it out. At the end of this recording, we will have a, um, a link to join up on the screen. So you can, you can look for that. Um, since the arrival of COVID-19 in our region, we have, of course, like many other organizations, had to pivot our programming, um, which has been interesting for us as a connector who used to really thrive on meeting in person. Um, so we've tried to get creative with our online programming, and Digital Dish is just one of the formats in which we've been doing that. So back at the beginning of the pandemic, we connected with folks in our membership through focus groups and surveys and asked what you need right now to help stay connected um, to each other and to our region. And what we really heard pretty clearly is that rising leaders wanted the chance to connect directly with decision makers and community leaders, um, ask questions, get information and, and really have their voices heard. So that's where this event series has come from, and we're so excited to be chatting with Mayor Collier today. So with that, I'm happy to introduce the mayor to share some opening remarks before we jump into our Q&A. Oh, great. Well, thanks, Rebecca. Thank you very much, Leticia, for having me today. Uh, it's an honor and privilege to be here um, and participate in this important dialogue with Ajax's emerging leaders. Uh, I'd like to thank the Civic Action Emergency Leaders Network for putting this together. And thank you for actively seeking partnerships with key influencers and community leaders at facil facilitating open and honest discussion. To be a leader that's participating with us today, I want to say welcome. I'm looking forward to being part of this conversation, and I hope you'll find this session both informative and helpful. I think this is all by acknowledging my, my council colleagues. Some of us have a lot of public service experience, and others were elected for the first time in 2018 but we're all in positions we've never held before. This unique situation has on the whole served us really well this term. As a group, we have fresh perspectives and passion for respective roles, and we don't always agree on everything, that's for sure, but we all want what's best for Ajax, and we're committed to working together to achieve our ambitious vision. I want to encourage anyone watching to reach out to the of council myself at any time. The decisions we make today will impact you tomorrow. We appreciate feedback and hearing about your lived experiences, and I'm excited to hear your insights about how AJAS can be a partner to emerging leaders as we strive to build an attractive live, work, and play environment that will foster and sustain economic opportunities for generations to come. Uh, today's asked to address COVID-19 and the way the town responds, and COVID-19 is unlike any situation we've collectively faced in, in my living memory. I know that many young people are entering the very uncertain workforce. A number of people have been laid off from their jobs. Uh, some are still struggling to get back on their feet. Everyone, whether it be parents or schools or business owners or employees, at all levels of government, have had to be very agile in their response uh, while having essentially no rule book to follow. Like any other business, municipalities had to move very quickly, quickly to adapt to the province's emergency orders, and most, including Ajax issued our own emergency declarations as a signal to the community about how seriously we're taking this matter. We remain under a state of emergency today here in Ajax. So I have to say though, that I'm really proud about the way that our town sprang into action, we the appropriate facilities, we transitioned as many of our employees to 
to work from home as possible while maintaining the services that we are mandated to do. We put screening security processes in place at town hall so we remain open by appointment. We also push forward projects like online credit card options for taxes and planning applications to provide the best customer service we could to the community. And it might be hard to believe, but many municipalities, including Ajax, did have these options such as credit card payments back in March. Our communication team dedicated all to canceling COVID-19 so residents and businesses had the most up-to-date information available. And we ran engagement opportunities for the community remotely. Our recreation team got creative by offering online camps, running a senior center without walls and seniors outreach calls. We moved our popular events like Music in the Square, Canada Day, and our Defense Industries Limited Spirit Walk online and provided residents with a Wellness Wednesday series to help keep people moving at home. Uh, our planning and development teams have gotten into the virtual fund with a new social media series called Act TOA, which features biking tips, safety videos, and visions in the village, which provides insights into what makes our historic special while highlighting current businesses. We've also wrapped a number of partnerships this year for things like drive through giveaways, ranging from small garden kits to board games for recent grads. Uh, our council meetings are now exclusively online by Zoom, and so are award meetings and public open houses. We really endeavor to provide timely updates and opportunities for feedback to both residents and businesses and implemented numerous strategies to ensure our community feels not only well supported, but feel heard as well. Uh, we've, we've hosted four uh, at home at Ajax council events and questions and connect with the community in a less formal and more fun way. On one of these sessions, I was with Mayor M. Mark Holland and our MPP, Rod Phillips. These chats, they allowed our residents to tune in and ask questions about anything from the stages reopening to business recovery tactics. Um, I look forward to hosting another one of these sessions in the fall, so please stay tuned for more details. In addition, we hosted a call-in town hall specifically for business, as well as a Facebook Live event with Minister Phillips to answer questions from the business community. In July, we launched the town's business growth and recovery plan, which we call 2020 Focus, and it includes 20 key items that are already underway to support businesses as we recover from COVID-19. I'll give you a couple of examples of some of these actions. One of them is our new uh, permit process, which saves businesses on average $2,750 Per business and allows them to expand or create patio space to increase capacity for their business while maintaining safe distance between clients. We've got approximately 20 restaurants across Ajax that have taken advantage of this process. We make property tax penalties for 60 days, relieving the financial pressure on home and business owners while they waited on federal and provincial funding. We supported our grassroots groups and community organizations that were helping our most vulnerable by diverting $25,000 for immediate relief to eight different community groups. My Ajax Gallery pivoted to produce a successful online gala when we raised more than $142,000 that's already hard at work via Durham Children's Aid Foundation, uh, Community Care Durham, Feed the Need Durham, Horizon House, and a number of other deserving organizations. Uh, we're excited that the vulnerable community lockers that were purchased with funds from our 2019 gala are finished and they're now ready to install. And we're hoping to have the program in place ahead of winter conditions to support those who find themselves in precarious housing situations. We partnered with the Durham Region to create the Ajax Hygiene Hub, which is a place that our unsheltered residents are able to go to to access showers, services, and thanks to generous community donations, clothing and food as well. This program's still running today. We also answer our hospitals call for support by donating iPads to their virtual connections program, allowing patients to connect with family members while visitation was most restrictive. Our scale, Shane Baker, submitted a report to Ajax Council on Monday, September 21st, which was endorsed by our council. It detailed the town's impacts in a bit more detail, which included financial impacts with a brief update from all departments included. And I highly recommend that anyone looking for information by that it's our website. Thanks to collective efforts and vigilance in our community, COVID-19 cases in Ajax and across Durham region had fallen. But unfortunately, the trend across the province is less promising now. The pandemic is far from over, 
Uh, we're maintaining a watchful eye on the numbers and continually discussing contingency plans. The town of Ajax is taking great pride in reopening in a safe and measured way, but following the province lead, we won't hesitate to roll back any reopening plans we have to ensure our community stays safe. In addition to staying home when you're sick, washing your hands often, maintaining distance, and using masks or face coverings when visiting anyone outside your circle, I also strongly encourage you to avoid and actively discourage house parties and gatherings of the 10 people with the problem with new rules. If we each do our part to take a step back and be very selective with outings, we're very much more likely to experience fewer infections and keep our neighbors and community healthy. While you your part in making your voices heard in this conversation today, I want to assure you that the town is also doing our part to advocate and communicate with all levels of government. We've been constant communication with our counterparts in the region of Durham and across Ontario to the Ontario Big City Mayor's Caucus. Uh, you may know them by their former name, uh, LUMCO, Large Urban Mayor's Caucus of Ontario, and it's chaired by, um, by my friend, Guelph Mayor Cam Guthrie. We share best practices and jointly advocate to top mayors and key influencers in government to ensure we speak with one voice to address issues of recovery, financial sustainability, and resident need. We also participate in the Association of Municipalities of Ontario's 2020 Annual Conference in August, where we're able to speak with ministers directly about key Ajax priorities, gaps, and needs. Many of the presentations made at the online conference are still available on the AMO website for anyone who's interested to have a look. Uh, for example, it was through these collective conversations that the need for the joint safe restart funding support for municipalities and hard to transit systems was communicated. There are two more things I want to address before I have questions. First, our town's economic development priority remains the top of our list in spite of the pandemic. We've been working through this term to lay the groundwork for business attraction and retention, and we're starting to see the results. You may have heard the most recent announcement regarding Amazon that's opening a new fulfillment center right here at the corner of Roslyn and Stam Roads. This means, excuse me, this means a thousand new jobs for residents as well as tax revenues for the town. And the best part is they're tracking to open at this time next year, which will go a long way to bringing new opportunities to support COVID-19 recovery. Uh, we're not stopping there. The Amazon site anchored the GTA East Industrial Park but will only be one of four new tenants on that space. We're really looking forward to announcing what the companies that will join Amazon in making HX their home are. We have millions of square feet of commercial and residential development in the hopper right now, and I'm happy to report the construction value of our permits has increased considerably over last year, and this is all great news towards our recovery. As exciting as our future is, I want to take a moment to address the other significant conversations happening now. World was shaken and reawakened following the murder of George Floyd in, in Minneapolis, the murder of Breonna Taylor in, Louis in Louisville, the trial of the officer found guilty of assaulting Devontae Miller, and the resurfaced video of Mr. and Mrs. Jeffers right here at Ajax Hospital. I just want to say very publicly, I wholeheartedly condemn anti-Black racist behavior. It's not acceptable in our society and determined to make Ajax a safer place for Black members of our community. Ajax Council recognizes our positions of power and privilege and our responsibility to act. The town of Ajax is proud to be the most culturally diverse municipality in Durham region, and we're constantly looking for meaningful ways to improve. We want our words to match our actions and therefore have moved forward with the creation of the Ajax Anti-Black Racism Task Force. The task force was created at the request and through funding support of Ajax Council to make recommendations to implement anti-racist policies and actions to combat barriers experienced by Black people and other racialized groups. Marissa, Ajax resident, uh, who serves as chair of the task force, made a presentation to Council on Monday, September 21st. As part of this presentation, the group formally supported the Durham Region's body-worn camera program for Durham Region Police Services as a first pivotal step to relationship building. I encourage you all to review the terms of reference, short and long-term goals on our website at ajax.ca slash task force. To conclude, I want to again thank the organizers, participants, and future viewers of this event. As young leaders, you have a tremendous opportunity for impact. 
The world needs innovative thinkers, new ideas, and a resilience that I know your generation is equipped with. I'm excited about the ideas you will be bringing to the table and the change you will bring to our communities. We need your awareness, your passion, and your creativity to improve the town of HVAC and beyond. And the recording, Letitia. Sounds good. Mayor Collier, uh, we are now going to dive into our Q&A. To start off our discussion today, we've brought together five rising leaders from Ajax to join us in, on video to ask questions. Our first speaker is Ron Jacren. Ron, can you join us on video to introduce yourself, talk about the work that you do, and then ask your mayor, uh, ask the question to the mayor. Hi there. Hi, Ron. Hi. Uh, so my name is Ron and I, I'm currently a senior manager at the Ontario Ministry of Finance, which, as you know, has a strong connection to the town of Ajax through our uh, minister, uh, Rod Phillips. Uh, I'm also part of the Civic Action and the ELN family through their 2020 Diversity Fellows Program. Uh, I'm also a, a resident of Ajax. Uh, so I guess my question for you, uh, I, I've been speaking to some of the small businesses in the area and I understand there are challenges uh, with reconnecting those that have lost their jobs as a result of the pandemic with uh, employment opportunities. So my question is, how is the town of Ajax supporting or planning to support those that have lost their job with uh, obtaining reemployment as the province continues to reopen? That's a great question. And I think you're aware as an Ajax resident that my top priority going through this term of council was economic development. And we've been working very hard to, uh, to move that, that platform forward. I talked a little bit in my notes about the 2020 focus, our outreach business form. Uh, sorry. Uh, what we're doing is one of our 2020 focus items was reach out to all the businesses. And I've, I've participated in many, many of these calls. Just to, just to have that conversation, what are your challenges? Um, how, how have you overcome and, and how can we help you? We look at our businesses as partners, we wanna help them. And uh, we've been able to, to assist, but also to share. We had some businesses, um, like for instance, Loblaws and Ajax, one of our largest supporters have actually reached out to an Ajax company and are using them for some of their um, packing products. And that company is actually booming right now. They're actually expanding and hiring. So we are able to hand off that information to other businesses like Gordon Foods and some of the others who can also um, uh, realize the, the, um, the improvements from that. So helping some businesses use other businesses to promote, We've been promoting very much um, our, our shop local campaigns, which is another one of our, one of our 2020 focus items. We, um, a, a local resident, Eric Novak, has actually put out a, an entire Facebook page. He's got about 14,000 members now to promote local businesses as well. I talked about the Amazon announcement where we've got a thousand new jobs, but that's, that's just scratching the surface. That's gonna be built very quickly and uh, by providing those new jobs for people that have lost their jobs, now they have some alternatives. The other thing is 70% of our population has to travel outside of Ajax to work every day into the city, most of them. So having more jobs available here in Ajax means less people on the roads, helps to cut down on our gridlock. That's also 500 hours a year of unpaid travel time that people spend on the roads traveling in and out of the city then they now have at home with their family. So better quality of life as well. Um, when I talked about the Amazon, that's only the start. We've got so many more coming and, and just creating local jobs is, is the key. We also have very close partnerships with Board of Trade to support businesses and rehiring. We have our Up Next Ajax program that's starting, uh, I think at the, in October, which teaches youth project skills for development. And uh, we've been cross-promoting for job fairs, hiring opportunities, and everything else. So those are just a few of the things 
that we've done. Um, again, we will continue. I don't think we're anywhere near to being done with COVID right now. Um, as we enter the second phase, the second wave, I, I think we've got a ways to go. We're just going to keep trying to find new and innovative ways to help support our partners, which are our businesses, and to help our residents um, maintain active employment. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ron, for your great question. Um, I, I will, you know, I'm excited about hearing the Amazon um, opening, which is literally walking distance from my house. So I'm curious if my packages will come faster. So we could talk offline about that. Uh, but um, I think it's what you've outlined, just um, some really exciting opportunities that are happening um, in the future for Ajax. So next up, uh, we have Erica Dupi, and she has a question for you as well. So Erica, do you want to come on uh, camera and share who you are, what, what you do, and your question for the mayor? Wonderful, thank you. Um, and thank you folks so much for having me here today. Um, my name is Erica. I am a social worker. I work here at Beaver Health in Oshawa. Uh, I'm an addiction counselor here. And um, aside from that, in my free time, I am a youth organizer, so I do a lot of work in regards to food justice, youth justice, and uh, harm reduction strategies, uh, as well as coupling that with safe engagement for youth. Um, I am a resident in the area. I'm a proud alum of Nova Dame CSS in Ajax. Um, and so my question for you today um, is, do you experiencing episodic and chronic homelessness uh, continues to be troubling and ongoing trend in your region? As of 2017, 50% of folks who were surveyed noted that they experienced homelessness before the age of 25. Now, as of 2018, approximately 16% of individuals experiencing homelessness in Durham region identified as youth. And within the region, Ajax has the second highest percentage of folks living in temporary accommodations for who are precariously housed. In recognizing the upcoming winter season and the upward trend of COVID-19, what are the time to address key priorities in supporting and providing care to those who are experiencing homelessness and even youth in particular? Okay. I will do my best. I, I didn't hear all of that. I heard most of that. It's a little bit staticky, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the things. And this is a very unfortunate situation. I mean, homeless youth become homeless adults. This is something that we want to try and help address uh, at an early stage. And um, I talked in my, my opening address about a few things, one of them being the hygiene hub. Um, we had such a tremendous outpouring of of residents that, that whether it be clothing, food, um, hygiene supplies, everything else, just to give access to, to these, these um, unfortunate uh, unsheltered youth and, and adults. And, and that's gone over very, very well. So, so we've done that. We also have, uh, we created last year a Ajax Homelessness Task Force, which again is looking into and giving feedback on what we can do, kind of like our Anti-Black Racism Task Force, give us feedback on what we can do. Because if, if I had all the answers, it would be done, but I don't. So we need to reach out to those that know a lot better, people like yourself and others in the community that know a lot better what the issues are. And we're taking those and implementing. One of the issues that came out of that was to have a locker program. It's been recognized that if you're homeless and you're carrying around your whole world with you, it's pretty hard to get a job. It's pretty hard to do anything and move ahead. So we have created a locker program and my mayor's gala last year, we raised $15,000 to, to create these lockers and get those in place. And those will be installed actually very, very soon. There was a delay, unfortunately, partly due to COVID and some other, just other reasons with manufacturing, but they should be installed by our town hall this fall. That will be lockers. That's a safe lit location. That has everything from Part of the other thing about being homeless is you don't have an address for mail. And if you want to apply for social services through the region, if you want to apply for social assistance, you get one amount if, you're, if you don't have an address and another amount if you do have an address. So creating that address is very important also for putting on a resume if you're looking for work and everything else. And these also have charging stations because everybody has a phone now. That's the way we all communicate. So all these things will be part of this and that should be rolled out next uh, next month I hope 
And, and one other thing that we did was Joanne's house is a youth um, kind of homeless shelter in Ajax. And we worked closely with them. And my mayor's gala proceeds last year, uh, a sizable chunk of it went towards supporting an initiative they have to try and get homeless youth back into the family home. Because like I said, homeless youth become homeless adults. And the best thing you can do is get them back in that family home at a young age so they don't become homeless adults. And Joanne's House has a program for that. So with uh, part of my proceeds last year, we funded that, that program for this year. So that, those are some of the things that we've been doing to, to help address our, our youth homeless situation. Thank you so much, Erica, for such a great question. And um, as you mentioned, uh, winter is uh, coming around rapidly. So this is a, an important issue to address uh, prior to that. And it sounds like there's a lot of uh, different initiatives in place uh, to kind of tackle that, um, that issue. So thank you. So next up, we have uh, Durka, who's actually um, an ELN um, executive member. Uh, so she, uh, again, as an Ajax resident, uh, we've been talking about doing <laughs> something like this in Ajax for a long time. So uh, Durka, if you wanted to jump on, uh, on video and uh, share you know, who you are, what you do for work, and um, your question for the mayor. And, um, thank you, Leticia. Um, and nice to see you, Durka. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see you as well. Um, it's great to be here. Um, and uh, as Leticia shared, I am also a resident of Durham um, and also an executive on the Emerging Leaders uh, Network with Civic Action. Um, and Ajax is also home to my most favorite places, which is the Ajax waterfront. You'll usually find me there on most days or weekends. Um, so it's a wonderful space that's uh, really quite special to me. Um, so thank you, Mayor, for sharing uh, quite a bit about um, the efforts um, um, uh, post uh, COVID pandemic, um, I, have, I have questions um, um, looking ahead. Um, specifically, you mentioned sort of, um, personally, I've seen Ajax, um, you know, grow over the, the years as a city, um, as a place that people work, play and, and explore. And I'm, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm certain that this growth will uh, continue. And so the question that I had is um, kind of looking ahead and, and beyond the immediate response to, to COVID-19, um, how is the region of, of Durham and the town of Ajax um, rethinking smart city design and investment? Um, specifically to become more inclusive, resilient, and sustainable in light of the, the this challenge and the future uh, challenges that we will likely face as a as a world, as a, as a community. Um, and specifically, you know, our new ways of living and working, um, as well as the economic impact um, of the pandemic, has certainly brought forth new needs and concerns, um, and also as well as an opportunity to, to transform transform the region in, in quite a meaningful way, um, a way to protect our most vulnerable uh, community members, but also strengthen the town and the region of Durham's preparedness for future challenges. Um, so what can we do to ensure that um, Ajax and um, Durham, the Durham region is really um, uh, smart, quote unquote, smart for um, as, as a community? Well, thanks, Durka. That's a great question. And um, there's a lot of different pieces to it. Uh, I talked er earlier about my platform of economic development, while I think second was uh, was, was uh, technology and innovation and, and smart cities and all that is very, very important to me. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about some of the things. I talked briefly in during my address about our delegations at the uh, AMO conference. And at the AMO conference, I was able to reach out to ministers from our own Minister of Finance, Rod Phillips, um, Minister uh, of Small Business, Red Tape Production, Municipal Affairs and Housing, Infrastructure, Transportation. I'm not sure if you're aware, I also chair Durham Regional Transit. So that's something that, that is very, very close to my heart as well. And through that was able to really try and promote some of the things that we've been trying to do. Um, as far as, as transit, I'll just talk about, we, we used our one-time doubling of the gas tax last year to create a fleet of fully electric vehicles that are gonna be rolling out this year in Oshawa. And we're gonna be running those in Oshawa on a new high-speed network there. We also purchased a fleet of hybrid electric buses. 
and those are going to be running in Ajax, and that's going to be starting shortly. We also have an autonomous, a fully autonomous vehicle that's going to be operating on a route in Whitby. So these are three sort of innovative ways that we're able to help people get around and hopefully get more people off the road, help address climate change. We've also purchased uh, articulated buses, which are the double, the double buses that will run and are already running along our pulse route east-west uh, along Highway 2, which helped link all of Durham from Centennial College all the way up to Clarington. As far as and some of the others at the region, we're looking at things like anaerobic digestion to help address our uh, waste issues, as well as create electricity, green energy. And I've looked at that further at the town, and we're looking at hopefully doing a municipal, smaller size, but municipal type project where we can address things like our algae on our waterfront. If we harvest that, you know, if you've been at the waterfront, I'm sure you've been there at times when June, July, when the algae is growing and you get that washed up on shore and that bad smell. Um, by harvesting that, that stuff's supposed to be jet fuel for anaerobic digestion. So looking at that and our pet waste and ways that we can help um, get rid of some of our other local waste as well as maybe reach out to small businesses as well with their organics is, is something that's very interesting. And um, you may have heard about our Innovation Village, which is an incubator tech hub that we're starting here in town. And that's a way to have people um, to be able to help educate and help uh, promote technology. We talked about Amazon and we've got Amazon and Gordon Foods and Loblaws and a number of other uh, large warehouse logistical distribution companies. Well, logistics isn't just about trucks anymore. It's about uh, technology as well and things like robotics as far as picking orders, as far as using drones for inventory counts and a number of other things. So how can we work with these companies and help move forward these, these technology type things? Well, that's gonna be through partnerships through our Innovation Village. Ontario Power Generation was one of our partners as well. Now with COVID, we're looking at how we can pivot that because creating meeting spaces and lab spaces where isn't something that may work right now. So we're looking at different ways that how, how can we still move ahead with this and, and not, uh, you know, but still do it safely through COVID. I know we have a 5G network rolling out shortly through one of the major uh, telecom companies, and that's something we've been discussing with them. Uh, there's just such a number of different projects in the works right now that, that we just keep going and, and, and are working very hard on. Um, one of the other things that, that we had reached out, that I had reached out to the ministers was stimulus funding to support uh, smart technology, resilient innovation projects moving forward, because there was no grant funding available for things like uh, tech hubs, which we're trying to create. To the waterfront, we have some major issues at the waterfront with erosion. We spent literally $2 million in the last three years in Ajax um, remediating washouts and things that have happened along our waterfront due to climate change. So we are working with the TRCA, we're working with the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Cities Initiative to, to try and look at ways to, to preserve, focus on water, mitigation, erosion, uh, flooding protection to help help protect our communities. And, and um, I guess the last thing I can say would be broadband. And we have a lot of money in in reserve funds at the region. And I said, I, I'm uh, vice chair of the, of the finance committee. And one of the things that I've said is our money is better invested in the ground. If we've got $2 billion sitting in reserve funds and we're making 1%, that's not even keeping up with inflation. So what we're doing now is things like pre-servicing our employment lands. We did that in Ajax in 2007 with our um, Salem Business Park, or I think we're calling it the East, uh, East GTA Business Park or whatever it is. Um, we pre-serviced those lands in 2007 and made them shovel ready. We put in all the, the water and sewer and electricity and everything and the gas, and now they're shovel ready and we're, we're seeing those results. So, let's extrapolate that out across the, the region and pre-service many more employment lands in the region. That's what I mean by our money is better invested in the ground. We make those proactive investments up front 
and let's include broadband in that. Every time we rip up a road, why aren't we putting in fiber? You know, we might not be able to light up that fiber right away, but over time we'll build a pretty significant network. Uh, so those are just some of the things that we're looking at. And finally, oversizing capacity. So in downtown Ajax, we are severely restricted with sewer capacity. We have millions of square feet of commercial application and high density residential that we can't approve right now because we don't have the sewer capacity to manage. So instead of dealing with these developments on a one off, so, you know, we'll just put in what's needed for this one. Let's put in a little bit more money. If you've already got the road ripped up and you're putting in a pipe this big, let's put in a pipe this big. You know, make, it's a small investment, but over time you've created that capacity and you're able to help move things forward. So sort of a lengthy answer, but there's a lot of moving pieces to that. And I could talk about it all day, but uh, I'll leave it there. Hopefully that's answered your question. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dirka. Um, and uh, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I, I think it's something we've seen in other cities where the same roads are getting ripped up over and over again. And I like that forward thinking approach I think is really important. So next up, we have Tanil Spencer. Uh, Tanil, if you want to join us on camera, uh, talk a little bit about who you are, uh, what you do, and if you want to share your question for the mayor. Hi, Tanil. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy to be joining everyone. Thank you, Leticia, for the invitation. Um, so, good to go, so good to hear your voice. <laughs> it's been a long time, my friend. Okay. <laughs> Let us get into my question. Well, first of all, I'm Tanil Spencer. I am um, a business owner in Ajax, operating out of Ajax. I have a t-shirt printing company um, and I have two small children. Um, and I've been living here for, you know, like over 20 plus years. So I've been very familiar with my city and um, the community. And this is a very meaningful conversation for me to be a part of. So leading into my question, I would like to know what financial supports and services is the city offering for small black business owners and what are the plans to combat anti-black racism um, against black children in learning institutions? Those are my priorities. Okay, well, thank you for the question. And I, I would say offline, send me your company information because I, I am big on shop local and uh, I just actually had to order some t-shirts for an event that's happening on Saturday. And I would love to use, I did use a local company, but I would like to, you know. Very challenging times right now. Off. I definitely would take you up on that and definitely would like to be a, a vendor that's considered in such an opportunity like that. So we often need things like that at the town. So yeah, please, please share that with me offline. Um, I spoke during my opening notes about our anti-black racism task force. And, and that's, I, I've also said, you know, if we had all the answers, we, we could just go ahead, but we don't. And our um, black community in Ajax is the largest in the province, it might, maybe in Canada, where 16.8% of our population is, is from the black community. So very significant. And who better to advise us on how to address uh, systemic racism in our policies and anti-black racism across, across Durham Region, Ontario, than that community. So I brought forward a motion back in June to create this task force and that's what we've done so it's still in its infancy we just had the first meeting last thursday i sit on the committee as just a liaison i want to make absolutely sure that there is no political interference i wanted to leave them fully open to develop their own task force their own um, work plan we have so to answer your question what financial we funded it so they all get paid um, and we will be any, any recommendations that come out of this will come to Ajax Council and eventually we'll have to enter our budget process in order to get done. So, so financially, we will be doing that um, when it makes sense. But the, the, as a taxpayer, uh, you, you know our only funding stream is property taxes for the most part. So we always have to be cognizant of, you know, especially now with COVID and people having uh having um issues with their jobs in some cases and their incomes affected it's a balancing act so what can we do to support businesses unfortunately from a financial perspective as a municipality whose sole source of revenue is property taxes we can't we don't have the resources to actually support 
local businesses financially, what we have done is what I've talked about before is reached out and done everything that we can to help support. Good friend of mine, Chedwick, VR Planet, for example. Um, when I did my mayor's gala, I knew, I knew his, and I hope he doesn't mind me speaking about this, but um, I knew that they were, you know, looking, they were struggling. And we had them come and do all of our online. And this was one of the very first virtual events. We held this in June. So we were one of the first ones to do it. They did it amazing. And we had a number of other uh, community groups and charities reach out to us and say, how did you do that? Tell us who. And so we were able to promote his company through that and connect through that. So now his company has done a number of other events. They just did my mayor's golf tournament two weeks ago where we raised $345,000 for the hospital. Him and his sons did all the videography and, and production and everything. They did an amazing job. Uh, I've also spoken with him and put him in touch with our economic development manager as far as helping him to pivot. So maybe having a storefront location isn't suitable now, but how can we figure out how to take your products and services out through um, community events and things like that? So, so we're helping in that way. I also lobbied our Minister of Finance and, and some of the others as far as the funding that's now come out for businesses and for black businesses specifically to help because the federal government is really the ones who have the money to be able to do that. We just don't have the financial resources. We're like any other business, the town of Ajax. So we, we still have employees. We have provincially legislated levels of service like police and fire and ambulance and transit and that we have to provide, but then we're not allowed to run a deficit right, where the federal and provincial government levels have several different revenue streams and they are allowed to rent a deficit. So that's where the funding has to come from. But what we can do at the municipal level is work as hard as we can to, to support. We have a dedicated grant writer on our staff at the town of Ajax. So I've, I've loaned Cassandra out to some different community groups to help them identify and apply for grant opportunities through the federal provincial government grants programs. And just let me think if there's anything else I can think of. You know, I think that's exhausted my list off the top of my head right now. It's a very difficult uh, question because it, it's, there's not a lot at the municipal level that can be done. We're doing everything that we can think of now and I'm absolutely open to any suggestions you may have of things that we can well, look as at. A, as a, a single mom and a black business owner who's providing for myself and my family solely, there have been zero benefits that have rolled down the pipeline that have actually supported me in keeping my business afloat at all. And I've explored federal, I've explored provincial, and now I've joined this call to query with you if there was any municipal supports. And I feel as if, especially in this climate, this anti-Black climate where we're finally addressing things that have been glaring for people like me since forever, I would have thought that there would have been something. You know, if the very most vulnerable are not able to be um, supported in this time, it feels as if there's, there's a gap in support services for me. So I'm happy that you're able to let me know that it's not a municipal um, issue, it's more of a federal redirection that I will need to follow up with, but I know that somebody needs to, or some supports need to come together to address this. So I'm happy to be following up and seeing what my local city has available for us. What I can tell you is, I believe 93, um, is it billion? Million was um, recently announced by the federal government. And if, again, reach out to me, and as well as anybody else affected like this, reach out to me and we will make sure we put you in touch with those resources and help you as far as, as much as we can, as far as accessing. So uh, do that offline. <laughs> Um, so thank you so much to Neil, um, triple W deep, deeply dope teas .com. Uh, uh, you, the work that you've done, um, specifically for, um, the black, um, community, not just in Durham, but across the GTA has been duly noted and, um, yeah, qual high quality shirt. So, um, just gotta, you know, put that plug in there. Thank um, you.
no problem. So um, I know we didn't necessarily get to the education question. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold on that one just to leave some room for the next, um, the next uh, uh, rising leader. So thank you so much, Neil. And if we have time, we'll get back to that last question. Um, Sorry. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully circle back to it because the next question I think actually connects um, to the direction Tanil was taking us in. So I'd love to welcome Jansen Campbell Skinner, um, another uh, fellow Ajax uh, resident that I know very well. Um, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and um, if you wanna ask your question to the mayor. Of course, uh, thank you very much, Leticia. Um, just to introduce myself, yes, my name is Jansen Campbell Skinner. I am the National Channel Account Manager for a cybersecurity company called One Identity. Um, that is my professional occupation. Um, I am also the founder and chair of a not-for-profit organization called the Wiseman Collective, uh, which is a unification of young black professionals, men professionals, uh, that seek to do positive outreach throughout the GTA and also in the southwestern Ontario region. So um, we do positive outreach through programs like Meals on Wheels um, at Dixon Hall, downtown Toronto, and uh, with the uh, Boys and Girls Club of Scarborough um, uh, through uh, Big Brother Mentorships. Um, and we do have our sister company called Push Start out in London as well, where we do some uh, for community outreach there. Um, firstly, uh, uh, Mayor Collier, I'd like to congratulate you and the Ajax City staff for securing the Amazon Fulfillment Center. Um, as you had spoken about earlier. Um, you know, we do recognize, uh, myself as being an Ajax, Ajax resident, uh, we recognize the positive impact that uh, this development will have on the local jobs, municipal tax revenue, and overall co community morale as well. Um, we, we spoke about, you know, other aspects of, um, you know, the black population in Ontario being dis disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. Um, not just residents itself, but also black owned businesses, um, which is quite a profound revelation considering the fact that the town of Ajax is, uh, you know, does probably carry the highest rate of black residences in the country or one of them, um, as we spoke about also. Uh, for further clarification, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau did make that announcement uh, saying that the government was contributing $93 million of $221 million, um, uh, that, that's a combination of government funds and financial institution funds for black entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship programs. Um, around the same time, uh, uh, your uh, municipal government had also established the Anti-Black Racism Task Force, the AABR. So my question to you, Mayor Collier, is you know, how would the, the town of Ajax leverage this portion of allocated funds uh, you know, and its influence with partners, gigantic partners like Amazon and, and other future partners that are, that are coming into the uh, the uh, East Industry Park complex. How would you look to leverage uh, these relationships and this financing to expand on uh, black initiatives within Ajax um, and to help fill the massive uh, social economic gaps that COVID-19 continues to widen for its residents? Okay. Uh, thanks Jansen for the questions. And um, to the new funding from the federal government, I don't know that much about it yet. It's, it's a very new program. So I don't know what the qualifications are for it. I don't know if it'll be applicable to the town or just businesses, but uh, again, I will have a meeting with Cassandra, our grant writer, because she will fully research the program and be able to provide me with all that information. And um, just, just quickly, you, you touched on a number of things there and um, Again, this is all very, one thing I've learned is how little I know about um, systemic racism and anti-black racism and, and, um, and I'm learning. So that's gonna take a bit of time, but we did create the task force and we are starting to get some recommendations from them. But as I said, it's still very early. So I don't know where, what direction that's gonna go just yet. The first meeting was just not even a week ago. So any recommendations that come out of that, we're going to take very seriously. One of the things, two of the things that I had talked about back when I brought this forward in June was um, 
uh, I'll call it sensitivity training for all of our staff and senior management. As far as, as I said, it's an education process for me. I, I, I'm realizing what I don't know and uh, I need to be made aware of that. And, and so that's, that's one of the things. Another thing I talked about was creating a youth mentorship program for black youth, a way to like a, um, oh, what do you call them? Those, uh, somebody that comes and just works to get experience. What, what did they refer to? A, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. But to have a program like our, our workforce, sort of give them that, that, that to, to, to move forward. As far as places like Amazon, their hiring practices are not something that, that that's gonna be their uh, decisions to make, but we will certainly be, be reaching out with recommendations from the Anti-Black Racism Task Force for things like uh, um, those programs, youth mentorship, that type of thing. Um, one of the people I know that was on the task force, Trevin at Ajax High School, did do a, a black youth mentoring program. And that's why I, I recommended him for that task force because he, he's just a, he was one of our youth civic award winners two years ago. And I was so impressed by this young man. I just have a really, intern, that's the name I was trying to think of. I was just really trying to um, figure out a way to get him involved in our organization. But because, I, and I don't want to say anything negative, but, you know, interns have been taken advantage of in the past by some businesses, there's limitations. So we're trying to figure out a way to get around those limitations. We can still have co-op students because it's part of the education program, but we can't have interns. So we're trying to figure out a way to have an internship program to help black youth. Um, what was one of the other things? Oh, I did talk about the, st the staff grant writer. And just let me just look at the question quickly so I don't miss anything. Uh, so, and, you know, I'm more than willing to, to have people work with, with our staff to put them in touch. As I said to the, to the last question, as a municipal, as a municipality, we have pretty limited options, but now the funding has been made available we will do the research, we will figure out the resources and through our economic development team and through our grant writer, get those out to our black businesses and, and figure out how, how they can access. Again, it's, it's very new. I'm not being very helpful on this and I'm not trying to avoid the question. It's just, it's not something that we know all the details of yet. But as it rolls out and as we get more information, I'll do my best to make sure that we, we provide those resources to our, to our black community and our black businesses. And I just want to touch quickly to the education thing, Leticia, if you, if you don't mind, because I, I, I did, um, I, I just forgot. One of the people, I went to Ajax High School. So one of the people that, that um, I, I'm very happy to see on the task force is the principal at Ajax High School, uh, Eleanor McIntosh, who is a, a black woman principal, very, very, um, well thought of in the community and she will be able to provide feedback on black youth in the education system because I've held a number of public open houses in my time on council and one of the things that's come up time and time again is black youth in the school system and how to address um, the you know higher um, higher failure rates, higher um, suspensions, those types of things. And uh, it's again, not something that I'm familiar with personally, but I've been asked these questions. So I was very glad to see her name on the membership list of the task force, because I think she'll really be able to bring some solid recommendations um, on, uh, on that issue. Uh, again, it's early, it's coming. Those recommendations will be coming over the next two years. And um, I'm really looking forward to, to getting that information and hopefully being able to bring forward some, some positive change uh, through those recommendations. And I saw Jensen dropped off. I just want to say thank you for the question. I was not trying to dismiss, but I didn't want to forget about the education question that I, I forgot at the other. Not at all, Mayor. I'm still here and uh, okay. uh, much appreciated. Thank you. No. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jansen, for the fantastic question. 
And um, I, before we um, kind of wrap up, I wanted to just ask one, um, one last question. And uh, I think uh, the leaders who have shared questions with you today, I think are a demonstration of the talent and um, uh, the, the talent that Ajax, that Ajax has. I've been saying it for years, but I'm glad people will get to um, experience, um, experience that today. It, you, you talked about the task force and um, you know, this uh, pulling of um, individuals who can come together to specifically um, address a specific issue, and namely anti-Black racism. Um, I, I look at Civic Action uh, and this, um, the, our Emerging Leaders Network, which has like, again, 2,500 2, individuals across the GTHA. Um, I'm, I'm just curious, what do you think needs to be done to kind of engage more Ajax residents to be more civically engaged, to join these task force, to um, speak up like our rising leaders have done today? Um, how do we get more rising leaders involved in in initiatives that are happening in the Ajax area? Because I, as someone who lives as, in Ajax, I sometimes feel a bit disconnected. I, I find I do a lot more civic minded things in Toronto. Gr granted, I do more work in there than in my, in, in my home hometown. So how can we as Ajax residents get more involved? Because a lot of our, I think a lot of the work is centered around young, like youth, which I do consider myself young. But um, we're, you know, I'm older, I'm married, I have, you know, I have kids. How do we engage our population, these rising leaders in the work that you're doing? Well, first, first and foremost, vote, right? That, that's so few people actually get out and vote. And, and I've knocked on literally tens of thousands of doors and talked to thousands and thousands of people. And I, it, a lot of people just aren't aware of what's going on in our municipality unless it affects you directly unless it's something happening directly in your neighborhood we have all kinds of like we have our financial sustainability plan we have our budget process every year we have all kinds of community events we whenever we do a development project we have to put out notice to everybody we have to hold public meetings and we'll hold those public meetings and then all of a sudden say a year later we go to start putting in say traffic calming in a neighborhood or, or something and everybody acts all surprised. We've been through this big long year long public process and everything else, but people are, and I'm not trying to criticize, but just, you know, focused in their own lives. They just not, not necessarily engaged in what's going on. And, but then act surprised later, there's a lot of opportunities to get involved. Um, but the first and foremost is vote the 30% voter turnout that we have is 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 difficult for me to understand when it comes to municipal because we are the people who you are going to um, talk to and see more than any other at the federal or provincial level. We're your go-to people for your day-to-day -day things. So get out and and learn what's going on. Um, we have um, we have advisory committees that we that we have, and you know we need twelve people on the committee, and sometimes we get ten applications. Right, so I don't know why, but that's, that's the way it is. But for the Anti-Black Racism Task Force, for 15 positions, we had 71 applications. So that was something that really, um, obviously I, uh, was very, very important to a lot of people and, and that's great. And then I had a lot of the people that weren't successful reach out to me complaining, like upset they couldn't be involved. And I said, well, this has nothing to do with me other than bringing the motion to create the task force. I, I wanted to be completely hand off, hands off and let them do it. So, um, but I did tell them to keep following up and if some people drop off, they will, but give your feedback. Like if you can't be on the committee, find somebody, one of the 15 people, their names are published on our website, reach out to them, tell them what your ideas are. You know, in the last election, we had some people running that said, oh, we're going to do all this stuff and we have all these ideas and, you know, they weren't successful and then they disappeared. Well, what happened to all these great ideas? I mean, <laughs> if, you're, if you're only going to give your great ideas if you won the election, that's, that's not a very good thing. So let us know. Reach out. Let us know. My phone number, my cell number is published. It's the only number I have. If people want to reach me, they call my cell phone number and, and I answer it, right? So... 
reach out, let us know, give us the feedback. We also, I'm very proud of the fact that um, I've always held uh, public open houses regularly. I had my Friday, every Friday, I had a, at 12 o'clock a coffee chat on Zoom since, since COVID started. We stopped it over the summer because nobody was coming on in August. So we stopped it. We'll start it up again in the fall. But I'm there. I'm listening. And there's so many different ways that you can reach out and give your feedback and get involved in the community. So, But you have to get up and do it. So uh, it's about talking. It's about raising awareness. Um, don't just get involved when you don't like the new stop sign on your street. Come out or you see litter somewhere or you have a complaint. I, I don't want to hear just the complaints. I'd like to hear some positive feedback and some, some proper ideas too. So that, that, that would be my, my recommendation. Just, just get involved, go to our town website. There's a ton of information. And, and if, if, if you truly are, want to become involved, you can. There's lots of ways to do it. Amazing. Thank you. It very much does. <laughs> I will be calling you. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, Ajax is probably for me one of the most beautiful places um, in the GTA. I'm very biased. What's your favorite spot in Ajax? Oh, well, everybody else has the waterfront. So I'll say something different. I'll say Greenwood Conservation Area because we always address the waterfront as the jewel of, the, of Ajax or the jewel of the south. Uh, I call that the jewel of the north. I, I remember back when, because I've lived in Ajax since 1969. I grew up here. I went to Southwood Park, Lord Durham, Ajax High School. So um, I'm very, very biased. And because I have such a vested interest, that's why I am where I am today. That's why I ran to, to be part of council and be part of the decision making to help us move forward. But one of my first jobs when I was about 15, 16 was as a lifeguard at Greenwood Conservation Area, at that pond there through the TRCA. Back then it was the MTRCA, the Metro Toronto Regional Conservation Authority. Now it's just the Toronto Regional Conservation Authority. And I've always loved it there. I think it's one of our um, least known treasures in the town. So if you want to get out and really enjoy a beautiful space and go for a walk and, and enjoy it, that's the place. Thank you. I actually just discovered uh, discovered it during COVID. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. So um, firstly, I want to thank all of our speakers and rising leaders for your amazing questions. Um, I'm going to pass the uh, virtual mic back over to you, Mayor Collier, for some closing remarks. Oh, well, I have nothing prepared, so I'll just very quickly say thank you, Leticia, and to everybody for your questions. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here, to help share some of the things we're doing in Ajax, to learn about the things that you're doing. These questions, the things, the public open houses that I hold are as educational for me as they are for the, the attendees, because I'm always learning and I need feedback so I can do my job properly. So I think I'm always, I might, I might not always say the right thing, that's for sure, but I always try and do the right thing. And if uh, that's how I learn, whether I'm on track and I'm steering us in the right direction or not, is through feedback. So as I said, it's, I always get the negative feedback. People will always tell me what I'm doing wrong, but it's nice when people can give some, some productive advice on, on what we can do right and move forward. So I got a little bit of that today out of our, out of our questions and some of the things I heard. So that's great. And uh, I, I look forward to, to working together and I wish you and your organization all the best. And um, I'm sure we'll see each other again. Great to meet five more Ajax residents. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, again, as a, as a, um, as a, Ajax resident, I've been trying to do, and a civic action um, member, um, part of the ELN, I've been trying to do something out here forever. So thank you so much uh, for your time here with us today. Um, and thank you to the civic action hosting team um, for flawlessly um, keeping us in on time and making us look good. And for all of you tuning into this discussion, we invite you to share this recording with your Durham networks and friends and colleagues. 
Our next digital dish, as we mentioned at the top of the of this session, will be in the Hamilton community will be with Hamilton community leaders on October 21st. Registrations will be launching shortly to all of our ELN members. If you're not an ELN member, um, you need to join our mailing list. Um, you can get tuned in to all of our upcoming events and be connected to all of the opportunities um, that we have coming up. And this is for anyone who identifies as a rising leader, a risen leader, any type of leader in their sector. Um, within the GTHA, you can definitely join us. Uh, you can, uh, so at the, on the screen, you could see uh, how you can get connected with us at www.leadership.civicaction.ca slash ELN. Thank you all so much. Um, and we hope to see you again.